Rostislav surveyed the noisy and smoke-filled hall crowded with his distant relatives. He wondered if he would be safer pursuing the Cumans across the steppe than staying in that room. At least the Cumans would have the decency to stab him when he was looking. Ostensibly, the crowd had come to congratulate him on his many victories and his marriage to the daughter of the Cuman warlord, Kotian. But Mr. Slav knew that though he was the man of the hour, that fame would come with expectations. Very expensive expectations. His uncle, also named Mr. Slav, came to him, bowing in a way that showed his discomfort of being lesser status than his young nephew at least for the moment. Grabbing his arm, and with a knowing nod, he reminded his nephew that the treacherous Vesevolod the Red still ruled in Kiev. Of course, the elder continued, a good nephew would use his great fame to restore his generous uncle to power in that city. The younger Mstislav nodded. Then came two sons of Vsevolod the Big Nest, a prince whose power and realm had been large, but not large enough for his eight sons. His ambitious progeny had been causing headaches across all of Rus for many years. Now these two, Yaroslav and Konstantin, came asking for help to depose their own brothers from two northern principalities. Mstislav nodded again. Hours later, as the celebration ended, he glanced over to his wife, sheepishly smiling at the nobleman paying her a bit too much attention. What did this Cuman Khan's daughter know of the politics of the Rus? Her people were simple. In the Eastern Steppe, the rules were uncomplicated. The strong ruled and the weak perished. And yet, Mr. Snuff wondered, why had a steppe people like the Cumans not yet demolished the squabbling and divided Rus? But it was only a momentary thought. Mstislav had more pressing matters. He had made many promises tonight. Prince Mstislav, your relatives' men are so filled with drink that they are causing a ruckus in the farmlands outside the walls. They must be punished. way to end a wedding night. But there is now much to do. Two sons of Vesevolod the Big Nest have asked you to depose their own brothers in Novgorod and Vladimir. Your uncle lays claim to Kiev, and you have unfinished business with your own rival, Prince Danilo of Halic. Prepare the Druzhina, gather grain for the campaign, and raise the banners of war. A Bogata is a great hero destined to be sung of in the epic poems of Rus. Find Bogata like this one and use them in battle. The more victories a Bogata achieves, the more his legend will grow. There are many villages, monasteries, and fortified camps that can be captured by clearing them of enemies. Capturing them will provide resources, relics, military buildings, and other benefits. <laughs> Druzhina are loyal retainers who guard their prince's territory. Armed with shield and axe, they can be trained from towers.
Capturing villages like this one will help supply your army and grow your manpower. It would be wasteful to destroy lands your ally will soon rule. Instead, target your enemy's castles. If a castle is sufficiently damaged, the principality will surrender. The Teutonic Knights said the swamps beyond are plagued by pagan devils. If you smash the pagan shrines, you will show yourself a friend of the order. Humans have been arriving from the east, claiming to be fleeing from a great and ruthless enemy. Their warriors pledge to serve you if you give them food to feed their families. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. Humans are asking for food. They say they were forced to leave their livestock behind, so great was the threat from the east. The Cumans are thankful 
and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. These Varangians have come from the north to serve in Constantinople. They ask that you show them the way south. They may also fight for you for a time, but their future lies with the Emperor. The stories the humans tell do not seem believable. They claim that a great horde has risen from the Far East and has already conquered many distant empires. It may be wise to take some precautions. Warriors from the surrounding countryside muster at camps like this one to defend Rus from marauding nomads. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. Sevalod the Red flees, and your uncle Mstislav has taken control of Kiev. You can now use the city's university. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. Since your ancestors discarded their pagan ways, monasteries like this one have been a focus of Rus' life 
and enrich a prince's lands. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Northmen who came through your lands before have returned. They say that Constantinople is held by French crusaders. Nonetheless, they plundered much and send you gold based on their number. A little grain and meat is a small price to pay for the support of Cuman tribes. They will be a powerful army under your command. are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The young prince Danilo Romanovich rules Halic on the borders with Poland and Hungary. His lands are rich in agriculture and provide pastures for large cavalry armies. Danilo of Halic surrenders to you and pledges that he will be a faithful ally. There is no reason to disbelieve the young prince. Novgorod has been a free city since the days of Vladimir the Great.
Vatyoslav Sevolodovich has the support of the city's militia, giving him superior spearmen and skirmishers. His cavalry is also well suited to fighting armored boyars. More Cumans arrive, telling of entire armies surrounded and vanquished, and whole tribes sold into slavery. As fierce as the Cumans are, whatever has driven them to flee must be spawned from hell itself. Vladimir has always defended the eastern approaches to Rus lands with kreposts, well-armored infantry, and resilient warriors. Yuri Vsevolodovich will be a challenge to depose from this well-defended frontier. Your people are distressed by the arrival of so many Cumans. They are urging action to be taken against them. Whatever enemy is in the distant east is less threatening than the hordes already at your gates. Attack the Cumans or ignore the demands from your people. Attacking will cause you to lose all human allied tribes, but will grow your support from your people. Receive plus 25 population. The Teutonic Knights say that you flirt with heresy, but that you also showed devotion by shedding blood against the pagans. They will fight alongside you for the glory of God.
You have deposed Yuri Vsevolodovich and placed his brother Konstantin in control of Vladimir. He will be a useful ally on the eastern frontiers. forced Novgorod's town council to depose Sviatoslav and place his brother Yaroslav in control of the city. Your wife's father, the Cuman warlord Kotian, has arrived, telling horrific stories of a people called Mongols. He says he pledges himself to you for having been so good to his people in this time of need. Men from the east arrived in Kiev. They claim to be ambassadors from a great Khan who has conquered Persia and Cumania. They said that if the princes of Rus served their Khan, these lands would be untouched by the Khan's hordes. Your uncle had them executed. Whatever comes from the east, you will not fight alone. Your allies gather their armies. They will meet you at your city. Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The flow of Cuman refugees from the east has slowed. Perhaps the danger has passed.
наказания. Calling themselves Mongols, they will fall to the Rus like all the nomadic marauders who came before them. The enemy weakens and retreats. Pursue and crush them. A great victory awaits you, Mr. Slav the Bold. There are many more Mongols than anyone could have seen. They have sprung a trap. Vladimir is burning. 
its prince died on the city's battered walls. Novgorod has been destroyed, and the city's prince has been executed. Men from the east arrived in Kiev. They claim to be ambassadors from a great Khan who has conquered Persia and Cumania. They said that if the princes of Rus served their Khan, these lands would be untouched by the Khan's hordes. Your uncle had them executed. Whatever comes from the east, you will not fight alone. Your allies gather their armies. They will meet you at your city. human refugees from the east has slowed. Perhaps the danger has passed.
horde comes from the east. Calling themselves Mongols, they will fall to the Rus like all the nomadic marauders who came before them. Against all odds, you have survived the invasion of the Mongols. Rus has been devastated, but from these ashes, a new authority will emerge. Rus cannot be a land of princes. It must be ruled by one man, a Tsar. Prince Mstislav the Bold and the remnants of his army returned from the battle on the Kalka River, weakened and weary. As they passed the Rus cities, the church bells were silent, for all expected the Mongols would be just a day behind, bringing more death and destruction. Miraculously, no invasion came. Prince Mstislav had seen the weakness in the Rus princes, all too divided for the sake of petty squabbles to unite against so great a threat. But the fact that the Mongols did not press their advantage meant that this was a lesson that would die with Mstislav only a few years later. When Mr. Slav passed from illness, his relatives were not around. They were too busy fighting over his territory. The Rus princes resorted to war among one another, planting the seeds of their own destruction. There would be no second chances. The Mongols would return. 